came for the 1917 communist revolution. The Rothschilds wanted the billion dollar fortunes of the czars or the Romanov rulers of Russia. And once this fortune was seized and safely in the Rothschild banks across the world, the more or less ethical Romanov lineage was replaced by the completely unethical black nobility lineage now ruling the world from Europe. The black nobility quickly gained their power by unscrupulous methods all across the globe. And they stripped Germany of her through World War One. Later, Hitler came along and promised to give the depressed and conquered Germany back to the German people. And he actually did this for a short time. But unfortunately, he was double-crossed. The Federal Reserve banking money from New York that helped finance him at first was cut off later. And he was told that England would support his actions and we know that later, of course, England and the bankers cut him off and turned against him. Well, since the European bankers gained financial control of America through this Federal Reserve system that we have, their puppets like Roosevelt saw to it that the U.S. got involved in the war against Germany also. The bankers wanted Russia and her people strong enough to play against the West. So they saw to it that Russia gained the most from a demolished Germany. Russia gained a vast empire from World War II and many others hidden things that Americans have never learned about. For example, she got the plates to print all of the new German occupation money that she needed. And the American taxpayers got bled for the entire communist takeover. And the elite's front man, Eisenhower, was sent to ensure that the Berlin Wall was put and kept in place. When Patton, the war hero, came along and had objection, of course, he was simply liquidated. And if you doubt this, the records are easy enough to show the facts, and there are books out on it. And later wars, of course, have usually been the inventions of the elite as well. Ho Chi Minh, for example, was under a Rothschild agent, Donovan, prior to his being put in power as a frontman leader. The bankers made huge profits when they suddenly declared war on their own leader in Vietnam. And the famed leader, General MacArthur, who was so effective in World War II was told to back off and was even fired when he got too serious about ending the war in Korea. Well, earlier wars had similar foundations. The Boer War in South Africa let the Rothschild interests, or de Beers, take over most of the huge gold and diamond interests there. Even our own civil war resulted when the banking interests of the North saw an easy chance to reap easy wealth from the South. There was nothing unconstitutional about the South seceding in the first place, and the carpetbaggers the, ba the bankers later sent to the captured South largely held power, and much of the wealth there is held in their hands even to this day. Most of the governments of the West, including Russia, are kept in line and ruled by the banking elite's chosen leaders. Nikita Khrushchev was a Russian leader that was quickly ousted when he wanted more authority and wished to aid his nation's farmers at the time. You might remember that Rockefeller met with him and got him back on track, and then saw to it that Russia stayed dependent on U.S. wheat. 
And there, the Rockefeller brokering monopoly in this country. Well, Americans are ruled today through the programs set up by the bankers' powerful foundations, like the Brookings and Hoover Institutes. And all this got started after the Civil War, when the Peabody Foundation was set up and found to be an ideal way to let the South get taken over by outside interests legally. And such foundations find legal loopholes to circumvent the Constitution and allow the Council of States programs to erode away our rights. And today we're actually run through a carefully disguised form of martial law. And the socialistic factions or Fabians rule through the elite's front men coming from places like Harvard and the University of Chicago. And these universities furnish most of our financial leaders now. And they are, in turn, ruled by the elite's faceless leaders, like Guy D. Rothschild and Toxus, Harriman, Rusa, And few of these people stay in the public eye. But these records can actually be traced. There are many documented books out on it. And the indications are that the elites expect to liquidate at least two-thirds of the world's populations by the late 90s. And since we Americans and the Europeans are harder to keep in line than the Chinese. Much of the population thinning will be directed toward the free world and we Americans. And today we can see how the farmers of present times are kept in line through high interest rates and commodity prices that aren't much higher than during the height of the depression in the 30s. We don't have to tell you who's back of the commodity systems of this world. And as the giant agro-businesses take over, the independent farmers, they continue to fall, go bankrupt, and our nation continues to be more controllable and more dependent. And to keep our independent types in line, there's the IRS and the CIA. Well, the IRS acted to garnish or withhold wages after the elite saw too many World War II plant workers evading taxes. Taxes were only a temporary measure at first, but were found very useful to keep the mass of people or workers more docile and controllable. And the more dangerous self-employed entrepreneurs were kept constant and content through various loopholes and preferred treatment. And typically, most of the tax checks went directly to the bankers and the elite through the Federal Reserve Banks. And much of it went from there to the Bank of England and the elite's coffers. And when protesters get troublesome, the CIA acts as a police force against the offenders. And the British intelligence programs show that violence is frequently good as an example. And the elite making good use of this. And the tax protesters, especially of their farmers like Gordon Call, being incinerated. This was a good example. A good example to keep patriots in line. And the CIA has a huge amount of cash to work with from its ties with the elite and its drug transactions all across the globe. 
And what's truly scary is that such organizations and people want to now contaminate other worlds in space beyond our Earth with such vile systems. As Germany was stripped after World War II, two-thirds of its heavy industrial equipment was shipped to Russia. And this was to build up communism and to provide the elite with their useful bad guys and cheap labor, as we pointed out before. And what's ironic is today's relentless hounding of the Germans and the concentration camps was the fact that thousands of German scientists wound up in Russia and wound up working for allied teams and even the civilians were hauled over all of Europe to act as virtual slaves for the rest of Europe. And Hitler had given the world incredible new technology by stepping outside the usual restrictions of the elite. And Germans have been punished ever since for their role with Hitler. Instead of getting shelved as a threat to profit, the new technology that Hitler scientists developed was welcome in Hitler's Germany of that time. And it's little wonder that the dangerous Hitler and his little empire had to be liquidated of the powers who rule this planet. Well, as the space budgets grew, the public had to be conned into supporting the super expensive pace space programs. I might add that Eisenhower purposely turned down America's first satellite project in order to allow the Sputnik victory of Russia. And this allowed the space race hysteria, which helped to support the needed tax increases at the time. And Nixon, of course, followed orders and allowed billions of dollars worth of equipment and high-tech data to flow to Russia as legal commodities. And the public, of course, was given an entirely different view by the press. Later administrations built up Red China's technology through thousands of intricate, complex, brilliant little schemes. And occasional congressmen who protested were bought off or threatened or even liquidated. One example of this was Larry McDonald who was a vocal anti-trade congressman at the time who was blown out of the sky in the infamous flight 007 over what was once northern Japan or the part of Japan our leaders gave away to the Russians. Touch a note here on socialism and we'll point out that the elite know that Americans are never going to adopt socialism by choice. So what they've done is to circumvent this block. And they've been calling socialistic programs liberal or anti-socialist, and then they just go ahead with them. Roosevelt, Eisenhower, Nixon, and later presidents all claim to be conservative. But they went ahead with giveaway programs, socialized medicine, disarmament, civil rights, aid to education, and trade with their enemies anyway. These were directions advocated by the Communist Party as well as the Republicans and Democrats. Well, it was easy as U.S. wages fell through inflation. The world elite fosters socialism because it erodes away individual liberty and it fits into their plan of a one world system. A few politicians buck the elite's power 